Good morning, everybody. Sam here, United People's TV live. What day is it? It's Wednesday. How are you all doing? Doing? <laughs> How are you all doing? Where are you watching this from? Let me know in the comments below, as you always do. Today, quite an exciting show. Obviously, the update last night from Fabrizio Romano already covered. I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail and cover an extensive update from The Athletic this morning, which covers everybody from Rafael Varane to Eduardo Camavinga to a little note on Jaden Sancho, a bit of an update on Brandon Williams' future, on Jesse Lingard's future. We can have a discussion about Alex Tellez. He's being linked with a move to Roma. Do we want that to happen? Let's talk about Marcus Rashford and this shoulder surgery, which might rule him out for a couple of months of the whole next seat. Look, until October, crazy. There's lots to discuss in this video. Obviously, I'm going to be starting with Varane because that's the exciting and important news. And it's not just from Fabrizio last night. It's from The Athletic this morning. So it's not me being just a day late, as some of you are trying to say in the comments. And as I always do, I don't always jump straight on the news. I don't, I don't mind letting it settle for a bit. And coming from a bit of a different angle. So as always, throughout the show, you let me know in the comments where you're watching this from, what town you're watching it from, and what country you're watching it from. And I can maybe add you to the map. If you really want to get added to the map, make sure you fire it in in a super chat. And if you have any questions, fire them in in super chats as well. Because as you all know by now, so many of you comment throughout the show. I do struggle to keep up with the comments. But let's go straight into the news. And this comes last night from the man himself, from Fabrizio Romano. Say Manchester United are now back in direct contact with Real Madrid for Rafael Varane after opening talks a few weeks ago. Negotiations on personal terms are not an issue. Man United confirmed their intentions to sign Varane. The official bid will go in once they know Real Madrid's final position. Now, why is this exciting? Because this is this is accelerated on from the fact that United opened talks a few weeks ago to United confirming their intention to sign Varane. That's the clincher there. That's the important one. United have now gone from being in for Varane, to making it clear to Real Madrid that we want to sign Varane. And that is an exciting bit of progress. As Fabrizio says here, negotiations on personal terms will not be an issue. They were never an issue with Jadon Sancho. We agreed those terms last year. Remember that. It's just that we couldn't agree on the fee. And that is why we were unable to sign Jadon Sancho. But this time around, United, we're going aggressive. We went aggressive for Jaden Sancho and we managed to get him. We're going aggressive for Rafael Varane. Personal terms will not be an issue. And it's all about whether we can agree on that fee. And that is the important part to go through on this point. We've got a couple of super chats firing in here. So we're going to have to head to the map. Uh, one of the OGs, Thomas Christopher. How are you doing, Thomas, this morning? You're saying Oslo, Norway. By the way, Varane ready in 120 hours. That's your bet. Look, if you're right, Thomas, I'll be a very, very happy man. I'm not sure whether Oslo's on the map already, but I'll add it on it anyway for you, my friend. Oslo, Norway. In you get. Bam. Straight in the map. And we've got one here from Kuma saying, watching from Kokstad in South Africa. Now, that's definitely a new one. Good morning to you, Kuma. Kuma? Lunica. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right, my friend. Thank you very much for Super Chat. And I hope you're enjoying the show. And I hope you will enjoy the show because it's going to be a good one this morning. As I said, it's an exciting one to talk about. And let's hope Thomas is right when, when he's saying there, Raphael Varane within 120 hours. I think we'll all be very happy if that is going to be the case. But let's go back to the news here. And look, as I said, this isn't just about what Fruitsi Romano had to say last night. Because there's an important update, <clears throat> a full update here from The Athletic. And they cover everything in here. As I said, they cover Sancho Medical, the fact that Varane wants a new challenge. They speak about... United, Look, there's plenty to go through and I will definitely jump to that book and I have to get back to the map here quickly because T-Roy, thank you very much T-Roy, watching from Western Australia and I've got my <laughs> East and my West messed up last night. So we can definitely do with a bit of Perth on here because we need some Western Australian representation on this map. And now you've joined the gang. Thank you very much T-Roy. Another one coming in here from Anurag. How are you doing? watching from Kolkata in India. And your question is, do you think the Sancho news will be official today? Um, it strikes me as I think it I think it could, if I'm honest, uh, Anurag, because the medical's done. Uh, Sancho's passed. He's joined Manchester United. As Fabrizio said yesterday, he is a Manchester United player. It is already done. It's just not been made completely official. It's, there's not been the announcement just yet. But let's go into this in a little bit more detail in terms of Rafael Varane, because as I said, 
it was an exciting update last night from Fabrizio Romano, but it wasn't just the only update. So the, what I'm going to run through now is I'm going to look at Laurie Whitwell's article on The Athletic. Now, in here, he goes into a bit more detail about everything that's going on with Rafael Varane. So it's not just an update from Fabrizio Romano. Before I do, make sure you make sure... We make sure? Before I do go into it, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. Make sure you drop a like on the video as well because it's important to have you all in and around here. We've got a super chat here coming in from Maga Atem, but you left it blank. So make sure you keep commenting, my friend, and I'll keep looking out for your name. I always get distracted doing this, but sometimes people accidentally send in blank super chats, and I don't want you to waste a super chat. So when you when you leave another comment, I'll make sure I read that one out. But let's have a look here at what Laurie Whitwell is saying. He uh, is to run through what he's saying on Sancho, say, look, Sancho has been given a three week holiday, which is very normal, which is very, um, oh, there you go. Look, Mago watching from Sydney. I'll add you to the map, my friend, but don't worry about that. I won't forget that. But speaking about Jaden Sancho here saying, look, every player who's involved in the Euros gets a three week holiday, but United have already got the deal done before it, get it done in the bank. And it allows, as it said here, look, it allows Solskjaer to plan with the forwards introduction. And I've said this a while ago, it's so important for players to be given that opportunity to settle into their new surroundings. And not only that, it gives Solskjaer the opportunity to make plans with that player involved in them. Because right now, he's going to have to make two plans for next season. One with Rafael Varane in and one without him in. Because he doesn't know whether he's going to go over the line, get it done or not. But this is what the latest is from The Athletic on Rafael Varane. Attention has now turned to Varane. United are aware that the 28-year-old would like to... He wants to sign for Manchester United with Real Madrid open to selling him because they're going to lose him on a free next year. And therefore, that's why I say, that's why I've said things are different of Real Madrid this summer because they're going to lose him on a free next year because they need money because of everything that's happened with the pandemic and the money they spent on the Bernabeu. They need Dosh and someone like Rafael Varane. They can get plenty for him. Varane's agents are understood to have informed. Let me zoom in so you can read this in a bit more detail there. Varane's agents are understood to involve prayers of his desire to seek a fresh challenge rather than sign an extension. And there it goes into a bit more detail. Madrid urgently need money, extensive redevelopment of the Bernabeu, and sources close to the situation feel Varane will ultimately end up at Old Trafford. And I, I hope that's right. I really hope that's right. Go into a bit more detail here from Laurie. Several sources are ur urging some caution over the optimism with Madrid holding out for significantly more than what United are prepared to pay at the moment. Now, that's always the case when it comes to Manchester United and transfers, really. It, it, the fee is never straightforward, is it? It was never straightforward with Jaden Sancho. It was never straightforward with sort of any player that you really get. And I don't really think it ever is straightforward because the selling club will always want to sell for more than the buying club wants to pay. But there is a theory that, and I, I'll be so surprised if United get it for this price. I genuinely will. A theory that Madrid executives will accept a bid of 40 to 45 million pounds. And I think we've spoken about it before on this stream in terms of how much do we think he's really going to go for? And I think we all agree between 40 and 50, but I suppose given the fact he's only got one year left on his deal, that really seems like a reasonable amount of money. Really seems reasonable. And I hope we're all completely right. But maybe that could clearly, just like with Jaden Sancho, Varane, joining United, he wants to. It's not an issue. Varane, personal terms, not an issue at United. We can give him more money than Madrid are willing to give him. doesn't make him a complete mercenary. doesn't mean that Varane's only going to join for the money. It just means the fact that Real Madrid don't value Varane as much as Manchester United would because he, David Alaba's coming in, I think, on a free from Bayern Munich. 11, 12 million euros per year he's going to be getting there. Varane's only going to be getting a 9 million offer. And that's the issue. And that is the reason why he wants to move on. He wants to get that because he's 28. He needs to get to that. He's at that point now where he needs that big contract. Before we speak about it a little bit more, didn't forget about that super chat. Let's add Sydney onto the map. Although Sydney, I think Sydney might already be in the map. But we're not, that's not sure. I'm not sure here. Got a super chat coming in from Abby. Thank you very much, Abby. Good to see you on here as always. Saying, what's up, Sam? If someone wants Lingard, can we exchange for Bissouma of Brighton? He seems good. And Brighton seem to be interested in Lingard. I'll be honest, my friend. I don't really think that um, swap deals don't really happen. 
you can really try and include players in terms of being involved in a deal, but a direct swap deal, they just don't really happen in world football anymore. And as I said, they clubs like to keep things separate. So I think if, even if Lingard, even if we were going to sign Rice, and even if West Ham wanted Lingard, I think they would separate those two transfers out. I don't really think they'd massively be involved. Going back to the Athletics update on Varane, let's keep talking about it because it's important. The prospect of personal terms being agreed is more positive, even if nothing is imminent. They're speaking about PSG coming back in, but I don't think PSG are going to go anywhere near Rafael Varane because they've already got Sergio Ramos on big wages this summer. They've already got, as we can see here, Kempembe and Marquinhos, who 25 and 27. They do not need another centre-back. And he would command big wages. I just don't see it happening, in, in my own personal opinion. Look, whether news of other clubs being in the market for Rand encourages United to pull the trigger remains to be seen. And clearly that could be used. It might be, it might be a case of PSG's name getting used to try and boost United's interest rather than normally the other way around where United's name gets used. Maybe PSG's name is getting used and that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Having scouted him for years, dating back to Fergie, United have taken the longer term view and see Varane as a potential quality addition of elite pedigree. And I don't think anybody would really genuinely argue with that, would you? Let me know in the comments whether you might argue with that, but I would not. I think Varane is elite quality, elite pedigree. 28, won the Champions League four or five times, won the World Cup. I mean, you're not going to get a more littered CV, really, are you? That's why I think about Varane. But the, as I said, there, there's the updates on Varane, and, and it comes from Fabrizio Romano last night. Sandy United are back in talks, and it comes from Laurie Whipple this morning from The Athletic, which wouldn't have been covered yet. So I'm not always just late. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, don't be rude to me. But make sure you drop a like on the video, please. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Keep firing in your comments. Keep firing in your super chats. Uh, if you want to get yourself on the map, if you want to ask me a question, it's the best thing to do. Let me see if I can pull a couple out here. We've got someone watching from, we've got Attila watching from Budapest, Hungary. I'm not sure if you've got Budapest on here yet. Why don't we go to the map? And thank you very much for watching on Facebook, Attila. I went around Europe a couple of years ago. I didn't get to go to Budapest. I didn't get to go that far uh, east, actually, to go to Hungary, which is a shame because I really wanted to. But Budapest, welcome to the map, my friend. Let me try and choose one more here. There you go. We've got Etop watching on Facebook. And where is this from? In Nigeria. Aquibom. Aquibom? I reckon I said that right. Aquibom. There we go. On the map, my friend, thank you very much for your comment. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, keep leaving your comments. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Please drop a like on the video. I can see there's over a 1,000 watching, less than 500 engagements. What are you doing, people? Come on. It's free. Get involved. But let's move on with the news here from Laurie Whitwell, because it's not just about Rafael Varane, is it? Eduardo Camavinga is a player that is... I wouldn't say he's heavily linked. His, his, his name kind of, kind of came out of nowhere. We got excited and then it sort of disappeared a little bit again. So what's the latest on him? Eduardo Camavinga is another player United have tracked for a couple of seasons and his future is up for discussion due to his contract being expired. It'll be the case that Camavinga either leaves for a handsome fee this summer or is a free agent next year. United have held tentative talks, but sources say there is no rush and the prospect of moving to Spain is said to appeal to the player. And that's not the first time we've heard that. We've heard it that he's been that he, he would like a move to Real Madrid or he'd like a move to Barcelona. What else does uh, Laurie, Laurie have to say about him? He said, in any case, it has been communi communicated internally that United may need to sell before another major purchase can be made. Now, that might be the issue here. So we've got Sancho and we've got Varane. Is it a case then that we need to sell players before we bring someone in? I think it's utter madness that we would make two signings without signing a defensive midfielder or even a, a midfielder of any sort that's really going to help our defensive side to the midfield game. Where, that's where the imbalance is in the moment. But what do I know? Uh, not enough, apparently. So looking down here, and this is where this is quite an important update from Laurie Whitwell on everything that's going on. Because who could be sold? We've already spoken about Deadwood at United this year. We've we've spoken about the man, the myth that is Phil Bloody Jones, that is somehow still stealing a wage at Manchester United and has been for so goddamn long. But would he be leaving? Will somebody actually pay genuine English money and pounds for Phil Jones? I mean, I really, really hope so. But at this moment in time, 
we're still not seeing anything towards it. And according to Laurie here, it's Brandon Williams is the most active potential outgoing transfer at present. Southampton, they want to get him on a season on loan, but United have put a two million loan fee on him. And that's kind of causing them to push back. If you remember, as it says down here, look, remember when Sergio Romero was going to be going to Everton last year, that fell through, that fell through because uh, Everton weren't willing to pay the two million fee that United want, wanted for Sergio Romero. That fell through. He sat on the bench. We didn't really do him a, a, a good service, I don't think. I don't think uh, Sergio Romero deserved to spend an entire year on the bench because we weren't willing to accept that two million fee. But Brandon Williams on loan. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Do you think that's something that United should be doing? Do you think that Brandon Williams could have a place at United still next season? You let me know. Uh, see what a couple of comments coming in here. Da, da, da. We've got Kerwin saying, I disagree with you. McFred are not responsible for our dropped points or losses last season. You let me know what you think about that from Kerwin in the comments below. But for me, Kerwin, I'm not pointing the finger at McFred and saying you're the reason that we dropped all these points. But I'm certainly pointing my finger at McFred and saying that does not match the quality that we've got in front of it. If you're if 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 the measures that we're going for are Rashford, Greenwood, Cavani, Sancho with Bruno and Pogba, and McFred doesn't match up with that. It does not match up with that. Nobody can argue that it matches up with that because it doesn't match up with that. And playing two holding midfielders is something that has, has hurt Manchester United, in my opinion, because it, it when it, when it when it happens, Manchester United don't have as much balance in midfield. We've got two holding, and the only reason we're playing two holding is because Solskjaer doesn't trust McTominay or Fred enough to play that role on their own. And that's why I say that while they're not responsible for us losing points last year, they're certainly responsible for holding us back a little bit. And that's why I think anyway. Got Isaac Monta Montoya coming in here with a super chat. The same, oh, thank you very much, Isaac. That's what I'm trying to say. And you're watching from Guadalajara in Mexico. The first, I believe, from Mexico. So big up to Mexico and big up Modelo beer, by the way, which is by far and away my favorite lager. Guadalajara. Wicked name for a place. Thank you very much for your comment there, Isaac, saying, hope you're doing well and I enjoy your content a lot. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, my friend. And I hope plenty of you do enjoy it because I enjoy doing it. And I really enjoy these sort of engaging conversations that we can have. And look at that. It's the man himself, the myth, Victor him, saying, can't wait for an official Sancho announcement. Oh, you're not the only one, my friend, but thank you very much for the super chat. Let's head back over here. Who would you have as CDM, Rice or Camavinga, if you had to choose between the two? If I had to choose between the two, I think Victor him, that's quite actually quite an easy conversation to have <laughs> because Declan Rice is a defensive midfielder and Eduardo Camavinga is an 18-year-old who... Clearly, as, we can, as we've seen by having a bit of a look into his career so far at Wren, he is a quality midfielder, but he's someone who's played in a double pivot, someone who's played as a central midfielder, as the right central midfielder. He's someone who, at the age of 18, is not a pure defensive midfielder. He's not a pure box-to-box. -box. He's an 18-year-old who is a bit of a, a blank canvas. Strikes me as a player that can pretty much be coached into any type of midfielder that you want him to be. And that's the sort of player you'd sign with Camavinga. With someone like Declan Rice, look, I said all along that Declan Rice, for me, had to really impress me at Euro 2020. And while Calvin Phillips, for me, at the start of the tournament, certainly impressed a little bit more, I do have to say that I think Declan Rice plays in that sort of position that unless you're a fan of the club, and I think Michael Carrick's a good example of here, and it's, it's the reason why all of us for so long said, look, man, Michael Carrick is so underrated. But it's because he does a role and plays a position that typical football fans don't really watch. And I think Declan Rice falls into that mould. I think he was actually very, very good for England. And I think I might have been unfair to him. I think his best performance in terms of eye-catching was in the final because you saw him breaking the lines. You saw him coming forward with the ball at his feet, which I hadn't really seen in the games before. But maybe that was because he was simply tasked not to by Gareth Southgate. Out of the two... You're choosing Declan Rice because he's a defensive midfielder. But out of the two, who will be the best signing for United? I don't actually know, if I'm being completely honest, because I don't know the ceiling of Camavinga. And it's the unknown of players like that that make them such exciting and interesting signings, or at least possibilities. If we're looking how down here on Jesse Lingard, going back to uh, Lloyd Whitwell's article, basically saying, look, You've got Sancho Wicked. We've got Varane, but United won't make more than two major signings this summer unless we sell players, which is why we're going down here 
and we're having a discussion about Brandon Williams. We're having a discussion about Jesse Lingard. Lingard is seen as a highest value asset, but West Ham cannot afford the proposed 30 million fee. 28-year-olds, two weeks into the final year of his contract, and there are some in Old Trafford who feel a new deal would protect his transfer value. Of course it would, but United have made a bad habit in recent years of getting players on ridiculous contracts. It happens way too often. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Type yes or type no. Would you like to see Jesse Lingard given a new deal as it would protect his transfer value? Or do you think that would be another case of United giving a um, contract to the wrong individual and it would come back and haunt United and hurt United? Because Phil Jones, you see, as somebody who's still on a contract with wages that people just do not want to pay. And that is a big issue and a big reason why we've struggled so hard for so long to get rid of Phil Jones. Could we find ourselves in a similar situation with Jesse Lingard? Let me see what you think in the comments here. We've got um, got Rohan, you're saying no. Sell him. Neil Walker, you're saying no as well. Lefou, you're saying no. We've got Martin, you're saying no as well. But Cosmic, Dwayne, you're both saying yes. What about Facebook? We've got Cole Baldwin. Thank you very much for joining, Cole. You're saying no. Mike, you're saying no as well. Dennis, you're saying sell him. Logan, you're saying West Ham want 100 mil for Rice, whereas Camavinga will cost 30 mil. I'll take Camavinga. I mean, as I said, they're, they're very different players and the idea that one is a pure defensive midfielder right now and one could grow into one. Um, comment here from Surav. Thank you very much, Surav, saying we need a defensive midfielder, beg, borrow or steal. All the good work will be undone if we fail to win silverware this season. There are good players in the market Director of Football and Scouts need to act without sitting and waiting, watching from India. So big up to you watching from India, Surav. And look, I've said it all along, and you know that I've I've stood very firm on my opinion that Manchester United will not challenge for the Premier League or the Champions League next year unless we sign a defensive midfielder. I, I still stand firm on that because in those games where we only want to play with one defensive midfielder so we can properly use Bruno and Pogba, we're going to have two. We're going to have McTominay and Fred because Solskjaer does not have a defensive midfielder he trusts enough to play that role on his own. Thirsty this morning. Thirsty work talking about United transfers. And, that, and that's an opinion that I will honestly stay firm on completely until we sign a defensive midfielder because we can't play a 4-3-3 properly without one. And that that's just facts now. Uh, heading back to here, there's still plenty more to talk about in this article. As I said, from uh, if you're not subscribed to The Athletic, I would recommend doing it. It's fantastic. Excellent art, excellent journalists on there, excellent articles, and it does offer you some real insight into everything that you want insight on. But going back down here, uh, people and talking about Lingard again, people on the football side of the club are said to feel the time is right to sell a player who deserves to be featuring everywhere, somewhere, every week, somewhere. And that I do completely agree on. Jesse Lingard deserves it in the exact same way that Sergio Romero, Sergio Romero. Sergio Romero last year was mistreated massively by Manchester United. We all know he was. He should have been allowed to leave the club. He wasn't allowed to leave the club. Instead, he had to waste a whole year sitting on the bench. And that didn't help his career. It didn't help him mentally. It surely didn't help anybody apart from Manchester United because we didn't lose a player for two million less than we wanted to. Jesse Lingard deserves regular first-team football. And he's a United Academy prospect who came through established himself, gave us some great memories. That FA Cup final goal against Crystal Palace, obviously being one of the best ones, but he loved Wembley. Wembley was his... He loved scoring at Wembley, just as much as he loved scoring at the Emirates as well. But the kid deserves regular first-team football. And if England's squad wasn't so ridiculously talented in attack, he would have forced his way into that Euro squad already this summer. But he deserves that regular first-team football. And I would agree with that completely. Uh, comment here from Avijith asking about McTominay. Saying, how about coaching McTominay into a defensive midfielder? No, no one better to learn from than Michael Carrick. Now, my uh, my opinion on Scott McTominay is that he is an excellent box to box midfielder. I question whether McTominay's got the natural. I don't. I don't know, Abby. If look, if United aren't going to bloody sign a, a defensive midfielder, then we're going to have to try something else, and maybe that is going to be. McTominay, but United can't have the ambition to go out and sign one of the best right wingers in the world in Jaden Sancho and to then scrimp on not signing a defensive midfielder and trying to coach McTominay into one. 
because it might not work. And if you're looking at what United have done previously, remember when we signed Anderson, the Brazilian, the attacking midfielder, that we tried to turn into a defensive midfielder. And lo and behold, that didn't work. Jeez. United, have, you can't get it so right with Jaden Sancho and then get it so wrong in just not signing a defensive midfielder. It makes no sense. And that's what you're talking about a lack of balance. There's a huge lack of balance where you've got so much ambition in one area and then no money to spend in the other. United have to get that right. And whether that means selling someone like Matic, who for me shouldn't, Matic will clearly stay next year because we don't have many defensive midfielders. And in a certain games, in maybe the cup games, Matic can come in and do a job. And that I don't begrudge. But he should not be playing every single week. McTominay is not good enough to play there every single week on his own. And Fred cannot play there on his own. So in my opinion, that's why it's so important that we sign a defensive midfielder. But we, we've, we've talked about this for so, so long. Uh, keeping on this Laurie Whittle article, what's going up next? Paul Pogba is another player entering the last year of his contract and United want, to want him to commit to them for longer. It is expected negotiations will continue into the new season, with Pogba waiting to assess the club's offer in context of what might be on the table elsewhere, in a similar manner to David De Gea in 2019. Now, again, you can let me know in the comments below. Do you want to see Paul Pogba given a new contract to Manchester United? Do you want to see him staying at the club? Let me know yes or no and why in the comments. Make sure you fire in your super chats. If you really have something important to say, that a comment that you want me to really read, there's so many comments coming in. I always struggle to keep up. And if you want to get on that map as well, fire in the super chats too. So far on the map, how many pins do we have? We have 82 pins. We won't be going for a week. Let's have a little zoom out, see where we are all watching from now. I'll tell you what, Western Australia. Look, Mexico, Mexico's now got its first representative. Congrats, Mexico. Look, we need Brazilians, Peruvians, Bolivians, Chileans, Argentinians, Uruguayans and Paraguayans, Colombians. Plenty here. We need some from Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Mauritiana, Mali, Niger, Chad, the public. I oh know, DRC. Someone's just in DRC. Look, Western Australia is just about representing now from Perth. Beautiful. There's plenty more to add to this map. So if you want to, make sure you fire in your super chats and you fire in your comments, and I will definitely get you added onto that map. Let me go back here. We look there. Victorim, excellent comment here. Thank you very much for Super Chat, my friend. You are an OG. Uh, I'm speaking about that next. So Rashford is coming up next, and we'll have a big discussion about that. So don't worry. I haven't ignored your comment here, but you're saying, with Rashford said to miss about 12 weeks with shoulder injury, let's hope Martial steps up and delivers in his absence, and Pogba has to stay 100%. Ah, oh, Martial's got to step up. He really does have to step up. You're absolutely spot on with that. Martial disappeared last season, left, just disappeared off face of the earth. Injuries didn't really help him, of course, but Martial was so disappointing last year and we really need to see him step up. And I don't know whether we can really trust him, if I'm being completely honest, in terms of uh, being our pure number nine. But let's see if he can maybe impress me and surprise me. And I would love to be surprised by Martial. Because he missed out on the, on the Euros because he had a poor season. Uh, Laurie goes into a bit more detail here, speaking about all the goalkeeping situations, speaking about Twanza being Phil Jones, whose last first team appearances were 18 months ago, may attract bids as the summer progresses, talks about Diogo Delot to AC Milan. And then also talks importantly here about the fact that we have banked the, the idea of signing Kieran Trippier at the moment. Kieran Trippier for 28 million. Nah, I get stuffed. 10 million, that seems like a reasonable amount. But the reason they put 28 million on Kieran Trippier is the fact that they do not want to sell Kieran Trippier. When you've got uh, clubs that put ridiculous prices on players, it's not because they're... It's not because they genuinely think that player is worth that much. Or maybe it is to them, but they want to put clubs off signing that player. And that's exactly what's going on and what has happened so far this summer with Kieran Trippier. In my opinion, I reckon that's exactly why. Because look... Atletico won the league last year, man. They don't need to. They don't need to get rid of that squad, do they? Look at that. We've got someone coming in here, and I haven't seen this one yet. So that's why this one's getting a shout out, Valentin. I've seen you spamming the comments, by the way, Valentin. Don't think you haven't got past me there. You have been spamming, but I suppose the spam worked because Beijing, China, <laughs> is getting added to the map. In you go, Beijing. Wicked. Honestly, it's wicked how everyone from around the world. I'm trying to look around my microphone here. Beijing, China, you are represented on the map, my friend. 
Congratulations. Look at that. Wow. It's starting to get busy, this map, isn't it? It's starting to get real busy. But as always, if you're new to United People's TV and you're watching from anywhere, make sure you subscribe, please. Make sure you drop a like on the video. All the engagement really helps the channel grow because it shows YouTube and it shows Facebook that you're enjoying the content, that you're enjoying engaging with me. And that interactive interactive aspect will hopefully make us bigger and better together. But let's speak about some bad news, unfortunately. Marcus Rashford. Shoulder surgery could keep Marcus Rashford out for two months of the season. The first thing I want to say about this is it's about goddamn time that Marcus Rashford was given the opportunity to have surgery. He played the whole of last season with niggles, whether that was his back, whether that was his hip, whether that was his shoulder, whether that was his ankle. I'm not sure that Rashford was 100% fit at any point last season. And he's still got so much stick for people. But this is what the article is saying, which has been uh, written by Ian Whittle at the Times, but backed up by James Ducker in The Telegraph. I think he actually was first to it and Simon Stone from the BBC. So it seems like this is legit. And we all wanted it to really happen and basically, Rashford not to go to the Euros, but given that they went the whole way to the final, you can't begrudge the fact that he wanted to be involved in that. Marcus Rashford could miss the first two months of the season after reportedly deciding to solve a long-standing shoulder injury by undergoing surgery. Now, the reason it's an issue here is because uh, Rashford wants the surgery now. But Rashford can't have the surgery now because the specialist surgeon that will carry it out isn't available until the end of June. Now, that is an issue because it means that we might miss Rashford until October. So you let me know in the comments what you think about this Rashford situation, because I think this is definitely an interesting conversation. Do you want Rashford to have that surgery, or would you rather him, I suppose, go another season, continuing to work with the niggles, maybe have, maybe have a minor surgery rather than the major one? Let me know what you think about that in the comments, but I think it's certainly one that's going to cause some debate. But I'm going to have to head back to the map, Thanks to this comment from Nathan Pitt. Thank you very much, Nathan. Thank you very much for your super chat. Watching from Hamilton in Scotland. Now, you can definitely get added to the map. Hamilton, you are not on the map, sir. Hamilton in Lanarkshire. Up you go. I've got loads of family up in Dundee. Haven't seen them actually for a few years, but I used to go to Scotland all the time as a kid. I haven't been in Scotland in a long time, actually. At some point, I'll be coming back up, maybe come up for Fringe. We'll see. Anyway, what are you say, my friend? You are saying, remember McTominay throwing Neymar around in the game we won. Very physical. And if the budget runs out, I reckon he'd do a job as a central defensive midfielder. Now, that I won't disagree with. I think that he could do a job as a central midfielder. But I don't think that that's what Manchester United should be doing. Manchester United should not be signing someone like Jadon Sancho, who is elite level at right wing, and then just settle with somebody doing a job as a central defensive midfielder. And that, for me, is the contrast that I don't really want to see. And that's what's sort of frustrating me, really, in the fact that we're seeing so much good in certain areas and then United penny-pinching in others. Thank you very much, Gungshi. Nice to see you again, my friend. Hope you're doing well out in Taiwan, if I remember correctly. And I think I do remember correctly. Rashford should never have had to play through those injuries. Let's quickly pull the screen back up here because, of course, we're speaking about Marcus Rashford and this. this is what Gungshi's had to say about him. Rashford should never have had to play through those injuries. I really hope it won't affect his career long term. Best of luck to him for a successful sex, successful surgery and recovery. Now you're spot on there, Gungshi. And I, th I personally think that Solskjaer had some real mismanagement when it comes to Marcus Rashford last season. Because there were so many times when you looked at Marcus Rashford and you're thinking... He's dead. He's dead on his feet. A bit like Bruno Fernandes. Both of those players got massively overplayed. And it's because we had a reliance on them. I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer felt that he could win certain football games if it didn't involve Marcus Rashford or Bruno Fernandes. I think Rashford played a part in every single game that United had last season. And he got so much stick and so much slate, but you could see it in Marcus Rashford's running style, in, in everything that he does, that he he just didn't have that little spark. And the fact that he hardly played a minute at Euro 2020, it goes to show again that, that, that Gareth Southgate was aware of these injury problems, that, that, aware that Rashford was as good as Rashford was for England at the Euros. He, he wasn't quite the Rashford that lit up United for the last couple of seasons. 
And it's because you've not allowed in that rest. Look, comment here from Petruto saying that Rashford needs a rest. He has been mentally drained after the abuse he's faced after the Euros final. I'm from Calcutta in West Bengal. I'll add you on there. And look, the abuse he received, he received was nothing short of fucking disgusting. And for Rashford to step up and take that penalty, having been left out in the cold, left out in the cold by Gareth Southgate, hardly played a minute of football during that whole tournament. And Marcus Rashford still had the balls to step up and take that penalty. And you saw it in the penalty. Rashford is a player who puts his foot through the ball. Rashford's style of play, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, his natural style of play is to lace it, knuckleboard it, put his foot straight through it. When it works, ooh, it's brilliant. PSG penalty, perfect example. Pressure penalties. Don't tell me that Marcus Rashford can't take pressure penalties. But that one there, it was a, it was a daisy cutter. Along the grass, he dragged it. That's not Rashford. And that's what happens when you bring a player on, by the way, 30 seconds before the end of Euro 2020 final at Wembley. That was a that was a huge bit of mismanagement by Gareth Southgate. And he just clearly wasn't fit and wasn't ready for it. And that's something that frustrates me so much. Cameron Hossein, thank you very much for the Super Chat here, my friend, saying, who do you think United will get as central defensive midfielder and why isn't Ndidi being mentioned? And you're watching from Stanwick, in England. Let me get you added onto the map, my friend. Stanwick in England, and I will answer your question. Stanwick, a minute. Yeah, that's now bit. Ba -ba -ba. Who do I think will get a central defensive midfielder? I'll be honest, at this point, I now don't think we'll get one. And I hope I'm wrong. I really, really hope I'm wrong, my friend, but I don't think we're going to get one now. I don't know why indeed he's not being mentioned because they've just signed Sumer, I think, from, is it Lunds or Lille? I think from Lille, actually. They've already littered. They're already quality. <laughs> it comes down to the ambition of what United, actually it doesn't come down to ambition, it just comes down to money. It's a pure money thing. If United had all the funds in the world, we would come through and we would sign someone like Ndidi. But I don't think we're going to. It strikes me now that if we don't get Eduardo Camavinga for 30 or 30 or thereabouts, I don't think we'll sign a, cent a central midfielder this summer. And that is a big, big problem for me. Co comment coming here from Colin. How are you doing, Colin? Dan James could fill in for Rashford and also could Garner turn into a DM. Now, Garner had an excellent season on loan last year. I think it was at Nottingham Forest. Anybody who plays a year in the championship comes back to Manchester United, a better player. I'm going to get Bradford added onto the map. Thank you very much for your comment there, Colin. And the question there about Dan James, look, as we saw with Dan James, Dan James was bloody brilliant on the left wing for Wales at Euros. And remember that Dan James is an actual left winger. He's actually been played out of position at Manchester United the whole time. I think Dan James could cover for Rashford on the left in the same way that Anthony Martial could. Could, could Garner turn into a defensive midfielder for us? Sure, he could. But again, I repeat, I'm going to keep repeating it. You can't go and sign Sancho on right wing, elite level, world class. You can't then go and sign Rafael Varane as your centre-back and then go and get Ghana as your defensive midfielder or maybe turn McTominay into your defensive midfielder. It doesn't match up. Elite level, elite level, scrimping. That's the problem. That's what frustrates me. If you're going to have ambition, have ambition everywhere. Don't decide to just have ambition in certain places and not in others, because you're, you're just going to create an imbalance in the team. And that's the imbalance that we have to get rid of in this Manchester United team. Simon McClure, good morning to you. <laughs> Are you uh, related to Roy McClure? Obviously, you, you may know me from such things as The Simpsons. Sorry, I couldn't resist. But anyway, you're watching from where? You're watching from Escher in Surrey. Good morning to you, my friend. Let me get you added onto that map. I've been to Escher, Surrey plenty of times, or at least I've driven through it. Let me see what your comment is. Can we repurpose McTominay as a proper central defensive midfielder? Fred has pulled him back. Now, you're not the first person to say that this morning, Simon. Uh, and I don't think you'll be the last person to say it. And I'll be completely honest in saying I think we can expect that next season if Manchester United do not go out and sign a central defensive midfielder. I think that we can see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer really trying that. Will it work? I mean, there's nothing to say it wouldn't work. But for me, looking at the natural abilities of Scott McTominay and what I've seen from him, it strikes me that McTominay is much better as a box-to-box -box midfielder than he is as a central defensive midfielder. And remember, that's a very hard position to play. To have the um, 
ability to hold that midfield on your own, to not move away from that position, to really sort of only play in like a 30 to 40 yard period of the pitch for the entire game. It takes a lot of discipline. It's not to say that the Scott McTominay doesn't have that discipline, but if he had that discipline last year, we wouldn't have played McTominay and Fred together. Solskjaer would have trusted him there. If that's something that Carrick and Fletcher are going to work on with McTominay this year, then maybe we can see it develop over the course of the year. But he has to play that role. We have to give him the opportunity to learn in that position. You can't expect him to learn that position by playing a double pivot with Fred. And I just don't think that Solskjaer is going to give him that opportunity in the first team because that's not something that you really want players to learn on the job at Manchester United. Really, is it? It... It, as I said, it will be such a risk for Man United to go and sign someone like Varane at centre-back, Sancho at right wing, and to then just, I suppose, take a gamble on a central defensive midfielder. It's not something that Solskjaer is going to do, not in my opinion anyway. We've got a comment coming in here from Akshay. How you doing? Saying, I hope Varane sign United and Donny should get some game time next season. I think Donny will get plenty of game time next season, if I'm being completely honest. You're watching from Kuhn in India. You're on the map, my friend. Thank you very much for your super chat comment. And I apologize to anybody who thinks that I'm just now using this map for super chats only, but it's just there's so many comments that come in on face. Honestly, every single live stream, there's about there's between two and three thousand, <laughs> two and three thousand comments. And I really struggle to keep up with them. So it just makes it a little bit easier just to limit its super chats. I don't limit super chats. I'll fire in a few at the end when I look back down. But Going back to a, a bit of a roundup, what we talked about, we talked about Varane. It's exciting. It's an update from not only for Rizzo Romano on the fact that Man United are really aggressively pushing and we want to sign him. We really want to sign him. He's on holiday now, but it's about the fee. That's the only issue we've got with Rafael Varane. It's not going to be around personal terms. That's important. We're moving on to everything that's been said uh, in the article by Laurie uh, Whitwell. We're looking at Brandon Williams going to Southampton. I think that'll be a good loan deal for him. And all this would be good for us to get him off the books. Jesse Lingard, whether he's going to be leaving on a loan with an obligation to buy or whether he's just going to be leaving. Both of those suit Lingard and both of those suit United. Lingard should be leaving this summer. Uh, you've got, who else? You've got Diogo Delot could be leaving to AC Milan on loan. Again, as long as that's with an obligation to buy, that makes sense. You need that obligation in there. It has to be put in there. You can't put players out on loan for two years without an obligation. That would just be poor management. Kieran Trippier, that's getting parked. Absolutely should be getting parked. Marcus Rashford being out for two months, that would be a massive blow for Manchester United, in my opinion. And I would like to see United not be without him for two months, but Rashford needs a rest, first of all, and he needs surgery. There's clearly, there's niggles that Rashford's had for so long that hampered him last season, but he played through the pain barrier. A bit like when Wayne Rooney did it for United. Remember when it was Bayern, when he injured his ankle away? And that was the game where Nanny, I think, scored twice early doors. And then Iron Robin, he got that volley. Let's not speak about it anymore. Um, let's see what's going on here. Got Nathan. Thank you very much again for the Super Chat, my friend. Big up to you. Eddie leaves next summer. We will need a striker and a central defensive midfielder. Glazers need to buy this summer. No budget is a lot of rubbish. Winter transfer on the cards. Maybe. But you're right. We're going to need a striker next summer. That's where Erling Haaland is going to come in. Erling Haaland is going to be United's main focus next summer. Will Chelsea go in and go crazy and buy him this summer? Cool, if you want to, go and do it. We're going nowhere near that. But I think Haaland will stay at Dortmund this year, and I think Haaland will need next year. And it's going to be for £75 million. That's his release clause. It's who gives him the best prospect of winning trophies. And maybe in that sense, it's going to be very tough for United to sign him. But I don't think it's outrageous for United to sign a central defensive midfielder and a striker next summer. But I want a central defensive midfielder this summer. You should be able to get two, three signings over the line. Jeez, it's what Chelsea and City have done so often. Why can't we do it? I mean, it's not hard, is it? Well, I don't think it's hard. We've got a comment here from Craig Peterson on YouTube. Watching from Simontown in South Africa. On you go, my friend. Simontown. Was that literally named after a bloke called Simon? I'm, I'm kind of presuming it was. I'm in town. I oh, literally Simon town in Western Cape in South Africa. On you go, my friend. You, you are saying Arsenal want Ruben Devers. We must hijack that deal. We must be ruthless in the market. You all know what I think about Ruben Neves. I've said it so often. I'd love United to sign Ruben Neves. And for 30, 35 million, however much it would cost, I think it would be an outrageously 
fair price transfer for a player who could come in and do an excellent job. And I would much rather see Ruben Neves come in and brought in as a pure defensive midfielder and maybe converted into one than Scott McTominay. I think Ruben Neves has got more to his game and he's played that role for Wolves and he's played in a variety of roles. Look, you've got Ibilla here on YouTube saying, let's get Ndidi. Ndidi would be a fantastic signing. Would absolutely be a fantastic signing. But Ndidi, we haven't been really linked with him. We haven't really been doing anything towards going after him. And that must mean that we're just not interested in signing Ndidi. And that doesn't really make any sense. As Victor in here says, thank you very much, buddy, for the super chat. United should look into Nevers. Would be a great signing, cheap and Premier League proven. Plus mine and Sam's favourite. Good choice. Ndidi is a perfect player for United, but will cost a lot. And I think Ndidi on paper would absolutely be the perfect player. That pure top-level defensive midfielder whose sole purpose in the game is to tackle, to intercept, to block, to protect the defence and to feed the midfielders in front of him. And he would play that holding role perfectly behind Bruno and Pogba. I don't actually think he cost an unbelievably outrageous amount of money. If, being, if I'm being completely honest, I think we could afford him. But we just don't want to go after him. And that is the issue. Here because otherwise we'd already be in for him, surely, in my opinion. If we really wanted Ndidi, we would have been linked with him a month ago, six weeks ago. The same goes for Ruben Neves. We've been tentatively linked with Ruben Neves. Kamavinga is the strongest link we've had to a central midfielder this summer. And he's a 30 million 18-year-old from Wren who has not really got a defined position. I mean, we were linked with signing him a couple of years ago, and I think we've got Hannibal Medbury instead. He's been an excellent prospect, so no one's saying that that was a wrong decision. But I don't know. I've said it all along, and I'm probably going to do a video on it because I really feel that United don't really have much of a chance of winning the Premier League or the Champions League this year without signing that central defensive midfielder. And I've always stood by that. We've got a comment here coming in from Hallo. How you doing, man? Watching from the Faroe Islands. Now, that is cool. Faroe Islands, you are going on. Torsh Avon on the Faroe Island. Wicked. Nice. Also, that is a hell of a name. Hello. I'm not even going to try that. I'm just going to call you Hello because I'm going to ruin your name and that will be offensive. <laughs> Look, Faroe Islands, you're on the map. Wicked. Awesome. Thanks very much for joining in on YouTube, man. And what you're saying, you're, can you talk a bit about the state of Old Trafford? How bad is it? Old Trafford, unfortunately, my friend, has been left neglected for so long, a bit like Manchester United's overall team. For a long, long time. But will that change? You see the Glazers have, 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 have come out and said, oh, you know, we're going to be investing there, investing 10 million this year. Don't don't think that the Glazers investing 10 million in Old Trafford this year is anything different. That's the annual upkeep cost of Old Trafford. They're not putting anything more into it. The only reason they've spent money in the last few years, I think, was to increase the disabled section because that was down as a requirement from the Premier League. It's as simple as that. They've they've left that stadium neglected for so, so long, and that has to change. Before I do finish, I'm going to read a few more of your comments out. I'm going to add a few more points onto the map. But if you're new and you're still here, thank you very much for still being around. But please subscribe to United People's TV. Please drop a like on the video. If you're watching on Facebook, drop a like and also share the video because it helps. As I said, all the engagement that you guys and girls do, it helps show that the videos are interactive, that you're enjoying what you're doing, and it will hopefully help us grow together. But let's see where you're watching from here. Let's have another couple down here. I've got Eugene watching from Paris in France. I don't believe that we've got France on the map. On you go, my friend, from Paris. Paris on the map, baby. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for your comment, my friend. Let's have a look down here. There you go. Christoph. I'm going to call you Christoph. I think that's probably right. Watch him from Poland. I'm not sure we've got anyone from Poland on here yet. Tarnow in Poland. There you go. Welcome to the map, my friend. Thank you very much for the comment and thank you very much for watching from Facebook. Make sure you join in tomorrow. Yeah, I'll definitely be here tomorrow. Let's go for one more. Ah, uh, one more from Facebook here from Sligo in Ireland. Big up, Ireland. A while since I've been there now, obviously because of all the uh, coronavirus restrictions. But that was a good live stream. I enjoyed that one today. I hope you did too. A, a quick roundup. It was all around Rafael Varane. It's starting to get exciting, people. We're really seriously in for Varane. The talks are happening. He's on holiday. 
It's all around the fee. Will Manchester United pay the fee? 40 to 50 million is being banded around. And for me, for a player of his quality, that is a very good price, in my opinion. My opinion, anyway. Eduardo Camavinga, not really a massive update on him as of yet. It's kind of gone a bit quiet. Let's see what happens with him over the next few days. But I think it's clear that United are really going after Varane first and foremost. Um, we've got a comment here from Colin saying, Aaron Bari for defensive mid and Kangin Lee for left wing. I'll be honest, I don't know anything really about both of those, Colin. So make sure you tweet me at Sam Peoples underscore with a bit more information and then I can have a read about them and then come back at you with a more up-to-date comment. And we've got a final super chat here coming in. From Nathan saying, you must be looking forward to going back to a full stadium, Sam. I'll be going to Old Trafford this season for sure. How difficult is it to get tickets? It's tough. It's very tough. I'll tell you what I did this year, Nathan, because as I said I was going to, I've actually suspended my season ticket in protest of the Glazers. It's something I felt obliged and something I wanted to do. Uh, I'll still be able to get some tickets, hopefully, for away games. Fingers crossed, anyway. That's what I want to see. But it's going to be fantastic to see a full Old Trafford, to hear 70,000 people Sing and give it, give it, give it to Eddie Cavani after he bags the winner against Liverpool. That's what I want to see anyway. And a comment here coming in from Stavros. Thank you very much, my friend. Saying, buy Camavinga and Kunde now. Varane for free next year. If Pobba leaves us, use Van der Beek and buy Bellingham next year. Rotate AWB to centre-back and focus on Haaland. That's a lot of comment. It's a lot of comment. Uh, Varane for... for, for that's like two transfer windows worth of movement. Bellingham, my God, wouldn't you like to sign Bellingham? Uh, we that, that was a real shame. Imagine how how different our, our midfield could be right now. We tried to go after Bellingham. We didn't really do anything wrong with Bellingham. We did everything we could. He just chose Dortmund and he can't begrudge him. He made the right decision. But if we had signed him, we could be having that Bellingham in this central midfield right now. My, my, my. Maybe our midfield would already be sorted. But as always, thank you every single one of you that's left comments. Thousands of you leave comments from all around the world every single stream on YouTube and Facebook. I love it. I hope, love engaging with you. And as the season progresses, I'm going to be doing plenty more of types of content, members only content, new things I'll be launching. So make sure you stick around. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Thank you all for your super chats. They really do help the channel. And it's all going to go back into the channel, which means it's going to get bigger and better, right? And that's a good thing. So make sure you should like, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll be back later on today if there's any other big breaking news. But as always, I'm here 9.30 every morning, Monday to Friday, bringing you the latest news bringing you updates and having just a good old chat about Manchester United. But thank you very much for all your engagements. I hope you have a great day and I will be here tomorrow. So make sure you join in. Until tomorrow.